TCT presents Public Report, a look at the issues and events of importance to our viewing area. Now, here is your host. Hello and welcome to Public Report. I'm Rhonda Webb, your host. I'm very excited about today's program because we get to learn about three digits that we may not be that familiar with. And I'm happy to have with me Sarah Kyle, and she is the Executive Director of 211 Northeast Michigan. So Sarah, I'd like to welcome you to Public Report. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you have an interesting number that represents your organization, but before we get into that, can you share with our viewers just your history with 211? So 211, the way it started in Northeast Michigan, we started in five counties, and our board was very specific about making sure every county had representation. So I actually used to be on the board of directors, okay. and uh, then I had to leave for a job, and uh, when they had an opening, they called me and said, would you apply? So now I get to have been there four years as the executive director and just get to make sure we're serving people every single day. Okay, now what exactly is 211? It is the most exciting program, I think, of course. It's three digits that anyone can call to find help. So we are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, free and confidential. When someone is in need of health and human services, um, for instance, they don't know where to go to pay their electric bill, we connect them to their local health and human services. So it used to be when I had a need, I would kind of hope that someone else there, someone out there had a need like mine or that we would get out that archaic thing called the phone book <laughs> and try to find some stuff. Um, now there's none of that confusion. You dial simply three digits and you're connected to a trained professional with a database. Mm -hmm. Now one thing that I really love about it is when you access the website, you have the option of looking at videos. Mm -hmm. And one video in particular, I know you have several, but there's one that refers to military or, or veterans. Can you just give us an example of what type of services someone who is a veteran um, in the military would be able to access through contacting you at 211? So it's really interesting. I don't know if you've heard some of the statistics, but in Michigan, there are a lot of veterans who do not have access or have not accessed the services that are due to them because of their service okay. to our country. So one of the programs set up by our previous executive director, who is a veteran, uh, is that we ask all of our callers when appropriate if there's a veteran in the household. And if they recognize or they, they say that there is a veteran, then we offer a follow-up call. Um, we have a specialist in our office who can connect them to those services. So whether it's making sure they get connected to the local VA, to their uh, county service officer, uh, there's even some food pantries that only serve our veterans. So those, those are things that we can make sure they're connected to. And again, it's because they've already served, these are the services that are really due to them, mm -hmm. and we wanna make sure we're connecting them. So it's really important for us to connect folks, all people, but especially our veterans. Okay, I really love that because I know one thing that is easily communicated as you're viewing the videos is that your specialists are, are non-judgmental and they're obviously there to meet the needs of the people that are calling in. And I love the fact that whoever calls in, you, you specifically ask them if there's a veteran in their home. We do when it's appropriate. So sometimes uh, for crisis calls, for example. So sometimes, unfortunately, we may get some crisis calls and we are nationally certified to deal with those. Okay. Um, but if someone's calling us and they say they want, you know, they're thinking about hurting themselves, uh, they don't have any answers, they don't know what to do, we may not ask our, our normal, you know, questions mm -hmm. because we need to focus for a minute on the needs that they have right then, and those are some pretty urgent needs. But for the general majority of callers, there are some questions that we're gonna ask just to get them better information. So there's a lot of referral options for folks over 60, for example, mm -hmm. um, children with families. So those are questions that we wanna ask to find more information, to give you more referrals, uh, to make sure that we're connecting you to your local services. Okay, now this may, appear to be a question that you've already answered, but I really want to make sure that our viewers understand the scope of what you provide. So who, who should call 211? 
anybody <laughs> can call 211. So it's one of those programs. This is one of the things that makes me so excited about the work that we do. If you can pick up the phone and dial, you can call 211. Now, there may not always be a service. Unfortunately, those services are not always available. Mm -hmm. So someone may call us and maybe their community doesn't have the, they don't provide the need, right? We can't find an agency. That doesn't mean we stop there. Um, for example, in the summer months, utility funding is very scarce. Mm -hmm. So someone may call us and say, I have a shut off notice, what do I do? And there may not be funds, but we're gonna ask that second question, right? If we can't help you with utilities, is there a food need we might be able to help you with? Okay. Uh, we're gonna keep we're going to keep giving you as much information as we can because we don't want you to walk away without a need or without a need met. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, unfortunately, that happens, but we give that information back to our stakeholders, to our United Ways, to our decision makers, so that when there are funds available, they can look at that and say, what do we need in our community? Mm -hmm. So would you say that 211 is, is like a referral service where People, regardless of the need that they have, they call 211, mm -hmm. and then you're able to connect them with services that will provide them with whatever need that they have. Absolutely. So the basic uh, program name, I guess, would be information and referral. Okay. So if you are in need of finding something, we're your first stop. Uh, it's a really good place to be able to go, especially when you have a need that puts you in a stressful situation. When, you're, when your cupboards are empty and you don't know where to go for food, uh, you, it's, it can be really stressful. Or mm -hmm. if you're a leader in your community and people are coming to you constantly with needs, that can be a lot to weigh on your shoulders. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're there for you to answer those questions. And sometimes the answer may not be what you want to hear, that the service isn't there. Okay. But we're still there, we're still listening, and we're still able to connect you to the services in your community. Okay, now just walk us through the process, and, I, and, I, and I'm imagining that it's a very, very simple process. So yes. someone's called 211, and perhaps they, they have a need that you, that you can address. Mm -hmm. What, what happens? So uh, what happens is first you're going to call and it's all routed through a statewide system. So the entire state of Michigan thankfully is covered by 211. Okay. So you call in from anywhere and, and really you're calling a computer but it's very quick. Okay. So they're going to ask for your zip code, they're going to ask what language you speak and then they're going to route you to the call center. And let's say you have a food need. Mm-hmm. Um, you and your, your little guys don't have, you know, any dinner tonight or your, your cupboards are empty. We're going to search a database of the most up-to-date information and we're going to find the most local resource to you. Okay. We're going to share some of that information. You know, um, some of our resources only serve every 30 days or 90 days. So we're going to ask a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been served by this organization? And if you say yes and you don't fit their qualifications, we're going to go to the next one. Um, if we can hear that you might need a little bit of extra help, maybe you're just under too much stress right now, then there's very likely that we can help make that call for you. Maybe we can make a warm transfer. Um, but more often than not, then we're going to give you a great phone number, um, we're going to give you good information, and then you can you know, find that service uh, that, we've that, that we've given you. Okay. That's really good. I you agree. Know, and it, and I it's, agree. It's pretty phenomenal that you offer this so that anyone throughout the state of Michigan, regardless of their need, they can call new, um, 211. Regardless of their need, their income, whatever status they are, you can pick up the phone and dial. And even if you're watching this and you have more questions, well, I'm just not so sure, pick up the phone and dial. There's nothing we're shy about answering. Uh, every single center has trained professional individuals who are answering that call and are willing to answer any questions that, that you can have. And if they can't answer it, they'll get back with you. Okay. Now, Sarah, give us an idea of how many people you have or, or your section has been able to service. Yeah, so my center, again, there are seven in Michigan. My center covers 23 counties in Northeast Michigan. And uh, last year we took almost 40,000 contacts. Mostly calls, but some people text us. Some oh, people, yeah, okay. I know they can chat with us <laughs> online. There's lots of ways they can access our information. Um, and the average caller has about two and a half people in their household. So we're helping about 80,000 people or more um, in our communities. And people are calling us with very basic needs. Um, utilities, food, 
housing. So we're actually helping our community just meet everyday living, which is exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and this is a question that is, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can answer it. I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> but I'm, I guess I'm wondering, first of all, how long has 211 been around? When, 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 when did it start? It started over 30 years ago in Atlanta, actually, and it was a project of their United Way. They recognized that they have programs that can help people, mm -hmm. but no one knew about them. So if they had one place for folks in need to go for information and referral, then it would be life-changing. So mm -hmm. it started there. In Michigan, uh, we've been in our region since 2009, but we haven't been an entire statewide system until the end of 2016, okay. which is exciting. Okay. So at, in 2016, December 20th exactly, um, I'll never forget that date, uh, <laughs> we became a full statewide system. So every county in Michigan is now covered with 211, which means that any person in Michigan, doesn't matter where they are, doesn't matter what their need is, they can pick up the phone and dial, a, like you said, a non-judgmental um, person who's going to answer their questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that, that helps a lot because you're saying it's only been since 2016. Oh, we've been a full statewide system. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, Sarah, we only have a few minutes remaining, but I just want to give you the opportunity to share with our viewers just what it means to you personally to be able to, first of all, serve in this particular role and serve the community. And again, I can only limit it to maybe a minute. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> so what it means to me personally is I know leaders who that's a huge stress for them, trying to answer that question of where do people go? Mm -hmm. So if you're a leader in your community, in your church, in your faith community, people come to you with really serious needs and that can be a huge burden. And the most exciting thing about what we do is we can help you relieve that. You don't have to know every service in your community. We can do that for you. And we do that free and we do it confidentially. 24 hours a day, we serve our community, which is one of the more exciting things that I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I really love that answer because I think it happens so frequently where people are going to leaders, whether it's leaders of a, of a church or leaders of a, an organization mm -hmm. for assistance, and that leader can easily become bombarded with information um, and then just not really have the, right, the, the access to the things that they need to meet the needs of whoever's coming to them. So having said that, I, I just love 211 of Northeast good, good, Michigan, good. and I really hope that people will access yeah. your, your agency and your services for our community. Absolutely. So Sarah, I'd like to thank you for being on Public Report and continued success in, in all of your endeavors. Thank you. And I'll be right back with my next guest. You know what, the relationship with God is the best relationship that you could ever, ever make a decision to have. And one thing that I have found in my personal relationship with God is that when this relationship is not where it needs to be, it's reflected in every other relationship that we have in life. And if you want to have success in life, and I'm talking about success from the inside out, beauty from the inside out, you need to be in a relationship with Christ Jesus because He will change your life and make it what is glorifying to him and so I just would challenge you to get to know him and if you know him already get to know him on a deeper level and in a greater dimension because he is awesome and he would just take you from glory to glory from faith to faith he's always doing something brand new so get to know him Aisha Woods here and you are watching TCT total Christian television Welcome back. My guest on this portion of the program is Dave Lane, and he is with Celebrate Recovery. So Dave, I'd like to welcome you to Public Report. Thank you. Well, I'm really excited about this particular program because I'm looking forward to all the new things I, I have the opportunity to learn in regards to Celebrate Recovery. But for the purpose of our viewers, exactly what is Celebrate Recovery? Celebrate Recovery is a faith-based organization that allows people with hurts and hangups and bad habits, um, addictions to come together in the name of God and our Lord and work on moving forward. Uh, sometimes I think of wellness 
if we break a leg or we're ill, our physical bodies will move from being broken to being healed. Mm -hmm. We have a spiritual body that's in the same condition or can be in the same condition. Our spiritual body, our spirit gets broken because of the world we live in, all the things around us, the struggles we have. Celebrate Recovery, like a physical body being healed, is designed to take your spiritual body and move it from a state of being broken to a state of being healed. Uh, of just simply being in love with Jesus and, and moving forward. Okay, I really love the fact that it is faith-based. So how does, how does that, um, how, how important is it that it is faith-based as opposed to um, some other organization that may decide to address it some other different way? It, fundamentally for me, it's about my soul and about my spirit and my relationship with God. And so if I want to improve my relationship with God, it has to be in a faith-based organization. Mm -hmm. A lot of organizations have a higher power um, that helps them, but in Celebrate Recovery, the higher power is God, the God who created us, the God who created all around us. Uh, he's there, he loves us. When you read the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament from beginning to end, it's about God wanting to restore his relationship with us. Mm -hmm. He wants that. It gets separated because of sin. It gets separated because of habits of, of life. Let's know what God wanted for us. God wants us just to be at one with him and to be with him. And so faith-based. Uh, without God, in my view, any recovery is shallow and temporary because mm -hmm. it doesn't focus on our Lord Jesus. Now, an another thing that I really like about Celebrate Recovery is that you cater to people who are just having challenges in their lives. So it's not specifically geared towards any type of an addiction, but a problem. So can you just spend a few minutes talking about that and the fact that you welcome people who are having challenges or difficulties of any, of any kind. Sure, and I think that one of the reasons Celebrate Recovery might have moved a little bit away from the word addiction is because when we use the word addiction, we think of hardcore problems with mm -hmm. alcohol or drugs. From God's view, being an alcoholic or being angry really isn't much different. There's sin, there's sin against God. And so in Celebrate Recovery, the program is to take anybody who is struggling and help them see God and move forward. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter rich or poor, uh, social economic status, how important you are politically or, or not. God loves us all equally and he wants to, us to be drawn to him. What separates us or what makes it more difficult is when we have sin. Mm -hmm. um, that is a bad habit, um, anger, um, unwillingness to forgive somebody who's hurt us. These kinds of issues, hinder our spiritual growth just as much as what we think of as hardcore addictions, pornography or alcohol or drugs. All of these issues keep us from being at one with God. The story of the Bible, again, is just about God's desire to be with us. Mm -hmm. One tool, if I may just mention, I found so helpful is Celebrate Recovery has a Bible they put out. Okay. It's the New International Version, so it's the Bible Scripture. But as you read through it, wherever you're at, not, not entirely, but I mean, uh, here's a place, uh, my name is Delilah, uh, Samson Delilah. Mm -hmm. Here's her story about her struggle. And then there's scriptures that go along with that to help us understand her story and, and where she went. Then following each of the Bible Character, characters give their testimony mm -hmm. is a testimony of somebody. This one happens to be, uh, my name is Marie. Uh, Marie uh, struggles with sexual addiction and anorexia. Here's her story and how Celebrate Recovery helped her. Okay. So as you're reading the Bible, there's just multiple places where they have the eight principles of 12 steps outlined and how it fits there. Then the testimonies of Bible characters and of real people who've gone through it. So it's a very encouraging Bible. The, mm -hmm. the Bible's fun to read anyway, but it's encouraging to read the testimonies of people who it turns out, oh, by the way, there I am. There was actually one here about a guy named David, and I stopped and read it carefully. And I went, wow, 
how did they know, <laughs> you know? So um, I'm a big uh, proponent of the Celebrate Recovery Bible. I like Bibles in general, obviously. But here's one that's designed to help people who have hurts. And you find people in here just like yourself. Okay, okay, well thank you for sharing that. Well, what, what I really want you to have the opportunity to do is to also share with us what a Celebrate Recovery time together is like so that people have some idea of what to expect and then also the level of commitment that you require people or of people who are interested in Celebrate Recovery. Sure. First is at uh, six o'clock, there is a, uh, we call it the, um, well, I started to say Hard Rock Cafe, but that's not the right word because that's, <laughs> that's a different one. Uh, the name escaped me, but we have an open period of a light meal. Okay. And that's just a time to sit and talk and have fellowship. Generally, the people come to that are those who know each other. A new person oh, might not okay. necessarily come into that. At seven o'clock is our open worship time. Uh, we have songs of worship. We have announcements. One of the things we do once a month is we have what we call coin time. Coin time is when we give a coin um, to somebody who has had 30 days of what we call clean time. Mm -hmm. um, there's 60 days, there's 90 days. Uh, last month we gave out a seven-year coin to somebody. Um, there's a lady who, who had 24 years of clean time. We honor those. I like to think about it when Joshua... Joshua took the children of Israel across the river. The first thing he said is, I want each of your 12 tribes to grab a stone. I want you to pile those stones up to make a monument. And the reason is that when your children ask you, what's that monument for? You can tell them a story about what God has done for you. Our coin time is like that. When somebody sees your coin, you can explain to them, here's what God has done. He's allowed me to have 30 days of clean time from anger or from, from whatever it might be mm -hmm. that's causing it. So uh, then at, at eight o'clock, we break into two separate groups, actually several groups, but women meet on one side and the men go to a different building. And in those rooms, we have open share where we just talk about the testimony we might've heard, or we talk about the lesson that was given. And each person has the opportunity to say, well, here's a point that I liked, or here's something I don't understand. Okay. And also, as you go around the room, you can simply say, I pass. There's no requirement to say anything. Then for those who are really interested in moving forward, there is a 12-step study, which takes 48 weeks. Um, it takes about a year to get through it. But it is where you apply the principles from the Bible, and you have to journal and write about the things. It takes about 45 minutes each week to do the lesson. Okay. And we get together and we go around the room um, in that the 12 step program is closed. You have to commit to it. Um, we're very concerned that you feel safe to uh, anonymity is the word we use. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to be real honest with people, I need to know that what I say in that group won't leave that group. And so um, in, in, in the eight o'clock sessions, uh, we really express the, the confidentiality as being a key issue. Okay. Okay. Now, can we talk a little bit about, first of all, I want people to understand where Celebrate Recovery takes place. Because I, I know that you're the co-leader, so let's talk about where your meetings are held. Uh, the ministry that I work at is at Old Town uh, here in Saginaw, and I figured out it's called the Solid Rock Cafe, okay. one I couldn't think of a few <laughs> minutes ago. Uh, but Celebrate Recovery is actually everywhere. There's uh, one on Tuesday nights uh, in Bay City. Uh, Thursday night is Midland. Friday night is Carroll. That's just in our, our immediate area. Uh, Mount Pleasant is starting a new group there. If you go to www.celebraterecovery.com, you'll find um, state maps, and you can look, and wherever you are, I'm highly confident within a half hour's drive, you can find a Celebrate Recovery to go to. Mm -hmm. It's very useful. When I travel, I'll look up where's the Celebrate Recovery meeting. And if it's a Friday or Saturday, and I feel I just want to stay centered on God, I'll look up where there's a meeting and I'll go to it. And so while I'm helping Old Town with the Celebrate Recovery ministry, it is a wide, wide organization. I understand 25 different languages in multiple countries. Um, and hundreds of thousands of people now have gone through the program. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's really saying a lot about its 
effectiveness and the, the scope of people that have been able to be ministered to through Celebrate Recovery. Well, one thing that, that I, I really want to make sure our viewers understand is the um, cost <laughs> or any kind of fees. Are there any that exist with going through Celebrate Recovery? No, it's uh, open and it's free. You don't need to be a church member of Old Town or wherever the meeting's at. In fact, you don't need to be a church member uh, to come. So it's free and it's open. Uh, when you commit to do the 12-step study, the book is five bucks. Um, it takes four books to get through it. So, so there is material to buy once okay. you make that commitment. But it is free and it is open. Um, and you can visit as many different churches as you want. Um, at Old Town, I think there is a half a dozen different churches represented. People go to those churches, mm -hmm. but come to the Old Town, uh, celebrate recovery. And so no fees, no charge, uh, just come. I encourage people just come and listen, uh, enjoy, and, and then make your decision. Okay, so the meetings are on Mondays? Old Town is Monday starting at six o'clock, and then the worship time starts at seven. Okay. And, uh, every Monday night, um, I encourage people just to come and experience it and, and see where God leads them. Um, pray about it. Uh, I think Celebrate Recovery is for everybody, but it depends on whether a person is ready or not to move forward. Okay. Well, I'm really glad that you added that last part, that it depends on whether or not a person is really ready to move forward, because obviously you want people to be able to get the, the full benefit of being able to come there and then see and experience how God and, and Christ interacting with them can get them through any difficulties that they may be having. I see it work time after time after time, but I also see people who aren't really ready to make that kind of commitment yet. Mm -hmm. um, there's times that we just, all of us kind of want to just slug it out ourselves yeah. and try to fix ourselves. Um, seldom does that work. Mm -hmm. um, right. God is the one answer that I know of. Yes, I have to agree with that. Well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for being on Public Report and giving us um, this information about Celebrate Recovery. And I really hope as a result that people will contact you because all of us have um, times in our lives where we really need to press in even more and rely on God to help us through different problems or transitions that we're going through. So thank you for having me. Yeah, and continued success to you also. Thank you. And to our viewers, be sure to join us the next time on Public Report. This has been Public Report. Public Report discusses the issues of interest and importance to our viewing area. Please remember that the views expressed by our guests are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of TCT or the station. If you have questions or comments, write to Public Report, 2865 Troutner Drive, Saginaw, Michigan, 48604.